everyone. Uh, for those of you who are in the room, uh, I think I've had an opportunity to meet or speak with many of you. If I haven't, um, I hope I do get an opportunity uh, today. My name is Chandra Foote. Uh, I'm Dean of the College of Education. I've been at Niagara University 24 years. Uh, started out as a faculty member right out of graduate school and have taught courses along the way. I've been uh, Dean for the last five years here at the university. And so I, I welcome all of you who are able to come here in person and I welcome those of you who are online. Our structure for today is going to be um, kind of quick and, and blocked into little chunks here. So I will talk to you a little bit about um, the College of Education and the programs that we offer. Um, some of you have uh, been to sessions with me before, so uh, bear with me, but you know, sometimes I talk really, really fast. And so getting it the second or the third time will be, uh, will be helpful. But I do need to share some of this information for people who haven't had the opportunity to join us before. And uh, after uh, my brief presentation, then we're going to move to a panel that includes some of our current students and uh, faculty and different uh, staff within the College of Education, um, where we will encourage you to ask questions and we'll answer those along the way. And uh, none of us is running out quickly at the end. Uh, so even for those of you online, uh, we will be able to uh, continue to take questions for as long as you want. Um, so again, welcome to Niagara University. Um, and this is the College of Education Dean's talk. Uh, I'd like to start out the presentation giving you the, the big bang hard uh, facts about uh, what makes Niagara University's College of Education different than the competitors. And uh, I don't wanna pretend that there, we don't have people out there who are also offering teacher education programs. There absolutely are. We want you to consider what they are offering and compare it to what we are offering. Um, and we believe that in most instances, you'll be very happy with what we are offering uh, in that kind of comparison. But uh, especially those of you who are new to education, don't have tons of family members who have been in the field, you might not even know what questions to ask. So if I put this right out there in the beginning, you start to think about those kinds of questions. First question you want to ask when you're um, thinking about Niagara University or someplace else is when do I start taking education courses? When do I start taking education courses? So certain programs may say, yes, oh, we'll admit you as a major. Um, but the question is, when do you start taking education courses? Because you, if you, they wait till your junior year, which most programs in the state of New York do, then your first two years, you'll get all, all your other stuff out of the way is what they tell you. And then your last two years, you take education courses. Well, you don't really want to get to your junior year and find out that you don't like education, that you don't like kids. You thought you did. There was one kid you liked once. Um, <laughs> that is not a career. Uh, and uh, so we want to get you in there. Um, we also, by starting within the, in the first year in education coursework, we also put you in field experiences right there in the first semester. And in every semester throughout your program of study, you'll have at least one education course and at least one field experience. Um, and we offer so to the point where when you get to the end of your program, you could have up to nine different field experience placements. If you wait till your junior year, um, you will have field experiences, but you will be going out extensively for weeks at a time to a single placement. And the challenge there is you don't have the opportunity to try out different things along the way and see where your fit actually is. Many of our students come in thinking they love early childhood. I want to do the little ones. I want to do pre-K or kindergarten. Those guys are so cute. <laughs> and they are. They're adorable. Um, but when you have to see them every single day, and if you're going to work in Western New York or uh, in, the, in the Northeast, and you're trying to put boots on and mittens on and everything else that you have to do, by the time you get them all off in the morning, <laughs> time to start putting them on in the afternoon to get those kids home. Uh, and so it's different. And so some of you, that is just like, if I had to do nothing but put mittens on all day, I would be so happy. Um, but for some of you, that might not be the case. And so you want to get out there and get opportunity to try that out. And then if you decide, you know what, I don't want to be in early childhood, I want to be in middle childhood, or I want to be in high school, or you know what, I, I thought I wanted to do uh, Spanish teaching, but you know what, I think I would really rather do social studies. You can't wait till your junior year and make those changes. 
So all of our students start in their freshman year taking education courses and they start in their freshman year doing field experiences. By the time you finish with the nine different placements, we're hoping that you have urban, suburban, rural, charter, private, public, different levels all the way across the board so that when you finish, you can say, this is the kind of school that I want to work in. This is the kind of thing I want to teach. These are the kinds of kids I want to teach because the job market is unbelievable right now. And you will be able to say, this is where I'm going to be happy for the rest of my life. I'm going to go out there and try those things. So ask, when do you start taking the classes? When do you start doing field experience? The second thing you want to think about is the four-year graduation rate. Am I going to finish in four years? And, or do I have to take an extra year or uh, an extra year after that uh, in order to finish my program of study? Uh, over here is Tammy Bruno. For those of you who are online, you, you'll get to see her later because she'll be, she'll be standing here. Uh, Tammy Bruno is the assistant dean within the College of Education, and she is, in fact, a school counselor for the education programs. She doesn't let you get to your senior year and find out you forgot to take this course. And we only offer it every other year. And so therefore you're gonna to have to stick around. She helps you uh, make sure that you're making those decisions along the way and that you've gotten all the courses that you need to do. But you also are gonna have a great relationship with an advisor, an academic advisor and a content advisor uh, within the uh, in a College of Education. And we are going to have these deep and important conversations with you because you might not be comfortable having them right now, but we're going to ask you, how's it going? Are you happy with what this is? Is this how you want to do it? Is that how you want to do it? And we can help you make those changes along the way. Our four-year graduation rate is so outstanding because of this kind of advisement. Um, but Niagara University has the highest four-year graduation rate in Western New York, and the College of Education has the highest four-year graduation rate at Niagara. So our students come in and do well. And that's not because it's easy. In fact, our, the education majors come in usually with a higher GPA and higher SAT scores than the rest of the university. So you come in better. Um, but because of the work that we do here, you, you finish up and you go out better and more prepared. All of our graduates, all of them who wanted a job in the last three years had a job as a teacher within one year of graduation all of them okay so i will tell you last year it was 97 percent of our graduates were working as teachers three percent of them chose not to look for jobs chose to go directly in and full-time to get their graduate school out of the way 88 percent of them were doing both at the same time all right so if anybody's telling you there's no jobs in teaching that is not somebody to take any advice from from here on out uh so there are jobs in teaching and they're phenomenal <clears throat> We have outstanding passing rates on our state certification exams and the national ed TPA. One of the things you want to ask the competitors is what are their passing rates on these tests? What you want to see is mid to upper 90s, 90%. You do not want to see 100% passing rate across the board. Why? Why would I want to go to the school that has 100% passing rate across the board? There's a sneaky thing that those institutions are doing. They're not allowing you to graduate with your bachelor's degree until you pass that test. We are all ranked across the state. Uh, and one of the factors for our ranking is based on the passing rates. Uh, so schools will say, you know what, we just won't let them graduate before they pass, because then we'll have this really outstanding passing rate. Well, there's a difference in salary for a person that has a bachelor's degree and a person that doesn't have a bachelor's degree when you go out to get a job. And you can go out and substitute as an uncertified sub uh, with a bachelor's degree. They want you to go out there and have that already. And so if we were to hold you back because out of the six tests that you had to take along the way, you failed one of them once, um, that I think is unethical on our behalf. Um, what we do instead um, is maintain contact and communication with you and support you and help you to pass it on the second time. All right, so you want high 90s, but you don't want 100% across the board uh, because of what that means is they're making them not graduate. And lastly, we have a, a number of graduate opportunities that are four plus one and four plus two um, program opportunities so that you can start in your junior and senior years to take graduate courses and you can leave with a semester or more finished um, within your master's degree program leading to additional certifications. 
So these are like sort of bang out of the out of the box things that distinguish Niagara University from other places. So what programs do we have? What could I what kind of teacher could I come here and, and become? First of all, we have programs that lead to early childhood and childhood certification. From back in the old days, that was an elementary certification. Um, a few years back, New York State uh, broke it up so that there is an early childhood, which is birth to grade two, and childhood education, which is grades one to six. And people can leave with two certifications. We like everyone to leave with at least two certifications. Um, we also have an opportunity to do a childhood and a middle childhood certification, which is grades one to six childhood and grades five to nine middle childhood or middle school. We also have a grades five to 12, which is the middle childhood with a content and adolescence education, which is grades seven to 12. And we have the option to get special education certification with both the one to six childhood and the seven to 12 um, adolescents at the same time. And this is one that we highly encourage our students to do because even if you are not thinking, oh, I wanna be in a self-contained classroom teaching special education, there is no such thing as a uh, classroom that doesn't have students with um, special needs um, and special learning needs within it. There may be kids in there who don't have IEPs, who should have IEPs um, and you need to be able to know how to differentiate. And so this is an outstanding uh, certification area and one that easily our students are getting as part of um, their program of study. We also have um, TESOL, Teaching English to Speakers of Other Languages. This is the one that I usually have to do the most remediation for folks on because they don't necessarily understand what it is. TESOL is, um, it's not bilingual education. It's not the same kind of certification whatsoever. Uh, so in bilingual education, um, you would go in there as perhaps a, a teach elementary school in Spanish to Spanish speaking children. As a TESOL teacher, you may have six to eight kids in your classroom and all six to eight of them speak a different language from each other and none of those are Spanish. Um, and you don't speak any of those languages. So as a TESOL teacher, your job is to help the kids move forward in their curriculum no matter what language they speak, move forward in math and social studies and all, all the other content, but also as quickly as possible, move to an English speaking classroom so that uh, they can learn with English being the primary language of study. It's almost like you can think of um, TESOL as a special education teacher for language. And with a special education teacher, you could have a self-contained classroom or you could be a coach that's popping in and out of different classrooms and consulting. With TESOL, the same thing can happen. You might have a self-contained classroom of kids who are just learning English for the first time and need to move forward, or they may be out in uh, classrooms throughout a building and you're popping in and out helping the teacher to accommodate those kids along the way. We've never had a student graduate from this program that didn't already have a job or multiple job offers before they leave. This is a high, high demand area. Not that the other fields aren't, but this one is very high. And it's, I think it's a lot because there's just a misunderstanding. People don't know what it is. It's also, if, if you're a see the world kind of person, and I know that's hard to be right now, um, but in the future, it will be much easier. If you want to, uh, you can have a beautiful life teaching this year in Germany and next year in Thailand and the year after that and wherever else you want to in the world and, and make a, a great living out of it. The content areas. Every education major in the state of New York is considered a double major. Uh, so you could, choose, if you want to be a science teacher, you could choose to just go into biology and then become a teacher later. But when you're preparing to become a biology teacher, you have a major in biology and a major in education. Again, we get this done in four years, it's okay. Um, but you have to have the knowledge of the content that you're going to teach beyond the level that you learned it in high school. Uh, so we wanna make sure that you know it inside and out so that you can be an effective teacher with it. So what kind of teachers do we prepare? We prepare English language arts teachers, math teachers, bio, chem, Spanish, French, social studies, and business. But we also have um, programs like TESOL and special ed and the birth to um, grade six where you're teaching multiple content areas. Those candidates uh, have a content major quite often that's liberal arts, 
And in the liberal arts major, you can select three content areas that are things that teachers would be uh, covering within schools and study a little bit more in depth. So candidates will often will teach um, English as one of those contents and they'll take courses like um, children and adolescent literature and teaching grammar and composition and things like that. And they'll take math. And you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to do math. Well, I want you to do math because we have math for elementary teachers one and math for elementary teachers two. And many of you grew up mid uh, common core. So you missed the early part of it. And you're saying, how would I even go about teaching something like that to a second grader? Because it didn't even come into place till I was in fifth grade. Um, and so our courses will are looking at that content and teaching you six different ways to teach fractions and eight different ways to do division so that you're going to be caught up and ready to go on all of those kinds of things. And then your third could be science or social studies or language or something like that. So those are the content areas that we cover. We have an amazing faculty and an amazing staff. Um, our faculty all have um, the highest credentials. They have a doctorate degree in their field. They have experience doing the work that they're teaching you about. You're going to meet a couple of our faculty members today and see some examples of that, uh, which I love having the panel here because some of you have been with me before when I say how wonderful the faculty are. And it's kind of scary when you see these highest credentials and they're researchers and they've authored books and done all of these kinds of things. But when you meet them and they're real people, you're like, really? you've done that and, and you're cool and I can talk to you. That's all right. Um, you have very small class sizes. You would not have a class size this big um, here at Niagara University. It was actually not as difficult for us to move to COVID teaching um, as it might have been for uh, some of our partners in Buffalo or Rochester because we have plenty of room and plenty of space and our class sizes aren't that big, so we could move apart a little bit. Um, we have very high academic standards, but we have really great faculty who will help you get there. And they engage with our students uh, by taking them to conferences and engaging with the professional community. Uh, if you want to be a social studies teacher, there's nothing better than going to the state conference for social studies, where uh, there's just a, a hundred people in the room who all love this just as absolutely much as you are. Um, you, you find your people that way. And uh, so it's exciting for us to take you to those conferences. And our staff is just as excellent. I introduced you um, to Tammy Bruno, who is the assistant dean and uh, the counselor for all of our students. Um, we have a field experience, um, director of field experience and an office where we coordinate your field experiences. You know those nine experiences I talked to you about before? You don't have to go find them. In fact, for the first five semesters, you don't even have to drive yourself there. We provide the transportation to get you to those field experiences. So we, in that office, we counsel you and we say, okay, what did you do last time? Where do you want to go the, you know, next time? Uh, should I go back to that same classroom I was in? I really liked it. Or should I stretch myself and try something else? Uh, we also have a certification officer dedicated right in my office upstairs. She can help you get certified in New York State. She meets with students along the way so that they know when to take the certification exams. It, the different exams along the way. You don't want to wait two years after when you could have taken it when you were at the top of your game for doing it. Uh, we want you to take it exactly when you should so that you're, you're really going to be ready for it. And uh, she helps you at the end to get certification in New York, but she also can get certification in every other state and um, a whole heck of a lot of countries, but she also sort of is our historian. So uh, two weeks ago, we had somebody from 1985 call and say, Oh, Florida wants to know who I, you know, what grade I was when I student taught. And I can't think back now. What was the name of that person? And Bev Eilert can actually, I don't know how she does it or where she figures it out from, um, but she will find out who the name of that person was, what grade it was, and exactly what semester that kind of thing happened in. And so she stays with you and remembers you for years to come. Uh, so we have an amazing staff uh, who are helpful with this. Uh, I got three faculty up here who aren't the three who, uh, who are here. Uh, just to give you examples of this. So Dr. Alice Cozen was the former director of special education at Niagara Wheatfield, teaches special education courses with us. Dr. Hala Hamza uh, teaches cultural and multicultural uh, foundations and uh, classroom management courses, originally from Niger, Africa, been with us for 15 years, uh, teaches some of the TESOL coursework. Um, and Dr. Uh, Sylvia Valentin, uh, used to be a bilingual uh, elementary teacher in Buffalo City Schools, 
Uh, in addition to her Juris Doctorate, she has um, a, a doctorate in uh, special education and, uh, and general education. And she teaches our elementary uh, language arts and uh, not language arts, social, social studies, studies and arts courses. Uh, so anybody, as you're learning to lesson plan and unit plan, you're going to have Dr. Valentine along the way. Uh, lots of opportunities beyond the Ridge. For those of you who don't know, we call this our campus the Ridge. Uh, the Ridge, just looking over into the gorge, but we have opportunities beyond the Ridge. I've talked to you about the field experiences. Those nine uh, different levels along the way, actually, we break them down into three phases. You probably, some of you are probably scared. Why? I'm not ready to go out as a freshman to do field experiences. I can't do that right now. You don't, you, you go out and you do observations and you may work one-on-one -on -one or in small groups, but the teacher who's sponsoring you out there prepares the information. She's gonna say, you know, take Johnny over here in the corner and work on these facts with them. You don't have to worry about how to do it. They'll ex explain everything that you have to do. And you'll have about five experiences like that. When you, when you feel ready and you have a good relationship with that teacher, you can take on more responsibility, but you don't have to until you're ready. Then at the mid phase, the second phase, you're taking methods courses, you're taking an assessment course, and you start to develop lesson plans and um, you do a teaching assistantship where there's a minimum of two lessons that you design and prepare with the cooperating teacher and present to the whole group so that when you get to your last semester, you're ready to student teach, you're ready to take on many more responsibilities um, and, and be prepared for that. We have lots of study abroad opportunities, which you see here. Um, one of them, this is uh, Thailand. Uh, we have a partnership in, in Bangkok, Thailand at Lertless Schools. And so some of our candidates have gone over and taught in the summer, um, gotten paid and had round trip airfare and they pay for your apartment and pay for you to teach over there uh, with a Thai teacher in the room the whole time. You don't have to worry that you don't speak Thai and these kids are too. Um, what are they going to do to me? Uh, they, um, it, you're very supported over there. And we actually have a number of our students who are over there for long-term positions. So they, they tell you, where do, we, where do we go to eat? Where do we go to do our laundry? Those kinds of things. And then this picture is Italy. Um, and we have an early childhood um, short-term study abroad opportunity in Italy where students leave on the Friday of spring break and go to Rome and Venice and Florence and come back on the uh, Sunday after spring break and never miss a day of school, but get to see early childhood classrooms as well as Rome and Florence and Venice. So this picture right here is a group of our students in front of Maria Montessori's um, first school. And if you, if you follow early childhood education, a lot of the philosophies and practices that we use here that are considered ideal actually came out of Italy. So lots of opportunities and surface opportunities around, as well as surface opportunities on campus. When you did your tour, you might have gone by the Family Literacy Center that we have right here. Um, in normal time, we bring children in from the local community who've been identified by their teachers as having reading challenges or struggling. And um, within one of our courses, students can do diagnosis with them and they do intervention and can help um, in fun ways to help children uh, grow and learn. And we have through the Castellani Art Gallery a number of other things where we try to help kids are writing poetry and coming in and doing composition and reading groups and circles and things like that of interest. So lots of opportunities to bring kids here to campus with STEM camps and things like that as well. Uh, I see Tammy keeps looking at her watch. So I may have gone way over uh, on lots of these right things. On time. Of course I am. She knows that I have to. <laughs> So I'm going to, uh, again, in COVID time, get away from my screen and let Tammy come up here and uh, I'll show you our panel. Thanks, Dr. Foote. Uh, I'm going to do well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, again, my name is Tammy Bruno. I'm the assistant dean in the College of Education, and I'm going to moderate our panel today, which means I'm going to put our uh, some of our favorite students and professors on the spot and ask them to share some information with you about our programs, about our campus, and about our college. So the first thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to ask our students to practice their best teacher voices so that everyone can hear them. Put your mask on, too. <laughs> We're going to have to learn how to do this. Um, so I'm going to ask you to use your best teacher voice, introduce yourself, uh, tell us what your major is, 
and it wasn't that long ago that you were on the other side of those desks. I'd like to know why you chose Niagara. What made Niagara different? I'm going to start with Rebecca. All right, so hi, I'm Rebecca. I am a math education major here on campus, and I have a minor in statistics. Um, so I, Niagara was not even on my radar when I first started looking. Um, I was like 97% sure that I was going to go to another school in like October. I told my mom, I was like, put the deposit down. I don't want to think about this anymore. And she didn't let me and thank God she did. So here I, I ended up here. Uh, my aha moment was actually like a random Tuesday when I was driving home from school. Um, it was between two different schools. They were about the same price. They both had education programs that I liked, but I knew in the back of my head, I liked Niagara even more just because I got that early experience. And so I was driving home and I got some texts that uh, something didn't work out at the other school. And I was like, I had a, like a moment of relief and I felt so confident in my decision to come to Niagara. I like went home and I was like, mom, mom, guess what, guess what, guess what? I made a decision, like it's going to be Niagara. I got that, I want that one-on-one -on -one attention that I wasn't gonna get as well as the, at the other school. And I had that experience right away. So that was really like my deciding factor. Great, thank you. I'm gonna ask Kelsey to introduce herself next. Hello, my name is Kelsey. I am a senior um, math education as well. I'm from Oswego, New York, which is about three hours east of campus. Um, my big draw to Niagara was similar to Rebecca's. It was that first semester teaching placement and direct admit to the education program, um, but not just the education program, but the small class sizes across campus. I knew I was going to start out my college career taking, you know, calculus and other hard math courses, and I knew I did not want to take them in a lecture hall of 250 people. And um, so it was the all across campus academic focus that really pulled me in, not just the college specific one. Thank you, Kelsey. And finally, we have a freshman with us who is <laughs> who is completing her first semester on campus. I happen to have her as a student, and she works in my office. I would like to introduce you to Susel and have her introduce herself. My name is Susel. Um, I'm from Rochester, New York. Um, the reason I chose Niagara was because it's when I stepped on campus for the first time, it was really like warm and welcoming. And I didn't really get that from any other campus that I visited. And also Niagara wasn't on my radar at first, but I decided to just go to an open house. And when I was sitting on the other side, uh, watching the same presentation, um, I didn't even know TESOL was a major. Oh, I forgot to say my major is TESOL. But <laughs> I decided to go to Niagara because it was the only university that I knew that offered TESOL. So. Great. That was my main reason. Well, we're glad you chose Niagara. All right, now I'm going to ask my colleagues here to introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about what they do here. Tracia. Hi, I'm Tracia McKissick. I'm the director of field experiences. So in my office, we place all the students who are education majors in all three phases of field experience from beginning to end. You also teach. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that was short and sweet. She does way more than that. <laughs> I was waiting. Sometimes. <laughs> Dr. Simonelli? I'm Dr. Michelle Simonelli. Um, I am the chair of the teacher education department. So all of the programs that you would be studying in, I would be the chair. I am the chair of those programs. My background is in literacy. So I teach freshman courses and I also teach literacy courses. Thank you. And Dr. Bardsley down there in the end. Hi, I'm Dr. Mary Ellen Bardsley. Um, I wear a lot of hats right now. I'm the associate dean, but I won't be for much longer, um, which means Dr. Foote gives me all the jobs she doesn't want to do, um, or things that involve a lot of detective work. Uh, and I'm also in the College of Education. I teach early childhood courses. So the people that do like the little kids in the mittens can come see me. So I usually teach uh, one of the courses at the junior level. And I also teach at the graduate level. Great, thank you. So now I'm going to ask our panelists some questions. I'm gonna to try to start with the most exciting ones in case we run out of time. So that means I'm going to start with Kelsey because her student teaching semester is coming up soon. Are you looking forward to that, Kelsey? I'm very much looking forward to that. <laughs> and do you feel prepared? 
Uh, yeah, so I've completed six placements already. Um, so I knew coming into Niagara that I would see a placement right off the bat, um, but I didn't understand the breadth of the placements that I would see. Um, so I started out at the Tuscarora School, which is an indigenous um, charter school through Niagara Wheatfield. And I've seen everything from that to Niagara Falls High School, which is urban, to Louisport Middle School. And um, so I got to see third through ninth grade at, at four different districts. So that was a great, great intro. Awesome. Um, now, Rebecca, you live on campus. So could you tell us a little bit about living on campus? What are the dorms like? What's student life like? So I love living on campus. I will live on campus all four years. It's just such a fun time. You get to meet a lot of great people right away. I had such a great experience with my roommate last year. She's one of my closest friends to this day. Um, you just get to meet a bunch of people on your floor as well. They're kind of like your first group of friends just because you do live in close proximity. So you get to know these people right away, kind of a, a intense setting right away. Like you immediately have to be comfortable sharing a bathroom with this, these people and showering, everything like that. Um, but you do really become a good community, like student life around here. People do uh, get involved on campus, everything like that. So it's just a fun uh, type of area to live in. You will live most likely live in the two towers. So even though uh, like you may, might live on floor three, you can also be friends with a bunch of people on the fourth floor and everything like that. It really is like each tower is a community, each floor is a community, every resident is kind of like a community. Great, thank you. Susel, as I said before, you are our freshman student here on the panel. How's your first year going? How are your classes? Um, at first, it was a huge different, like a huge step from high school. Um, but all the teach, all the professors that I have really help you adjust into it. Um, I take two classes with Professor McKissick and Professor Bruno, and their classes are different from my other classes because they're way more engaging in the way they teach. And it's a breath of fresh air coming from high school where it's mostly like they're just speaking at you to have different experiences in the classroom. So I enjoy my classes here, I really do. Thank you, Susel. So we're in this beautiful building. You might've noticed when you walked in, uh, this building was designed for the College of Education. I'm gonna ask Dr. Bardsley, I'm gonna surprise her and ask her <laughs> if she can tell us a little bit about the building and what is special about it for teachers. <laughs> So she gave us questions. That one was not on the list. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was here. I did. I switched on. So it. actually, when I started here, the building was just, they broke ground. And the faculty members had input into what the classrooms would look like. So especially when you go up onto the uh, other floors. So if you go up to the third floor, all of the faculty have offices up there. And they decided instead of having a long hallway with office, 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 or actually in um, suites or pods. So if you walk into the door, you'll see in every suite, there's a table and chairs, a whiteboard, some other kind of furniture and small offices. And the idea was that it's a spot for a meeting with students. Um, Dr. Simonelli came to see me just before we came down and there's stuff all over the table because I have my students doing a project in the community and they need to uh, grab some materials at their leisure and have a space to work. Um, so that's all in there. Um, I used to have be in a different suite with Dr. Vermette and I would sometimes come back from class and I would think there had been a party and nobody invited me because you know, <laughs> they were all in class together and now two thirds of them are up there in, my, in the office. Um, so all the faculty are in one location. So. Even if you can't find your advisor, students know to go up to the third floor and they'll find somebody to help them. The second floor, uh, there's no classrooms up there. The second floor has a um, model type classroom that was designed sort of to be a middle schoolish type classroom. So it's got little alcoves in it, it's got some bookshelves in it, it's got several different kind of boards and gizmos. Um, and the idea there is the furniture is even more flexible than down here. Not right now. Now there are purple marks on the floor and you're not supposed to move anything. But in, in normal times, the, the chairs and tables flip around so we can do all sorts of grouping. So you go in one time of the day and somebody's got a big horseshoe going. You go another time of the day and they're in groups of fours. Um, lots of spaces for students to display materials and create things. On the second floor is also the Dean's office, so Dr. Uh, Foote. Tammy, Simon, who's over here, um, and other people are there. 
Um, this is McKissick's office is there, so students know just to come to that end. Uh, on the first floor, we have the Family Literacy Center, which Dr. Foote mentioned, which is right down there, out this door. Um, and we have children who come on campus for tutoring. This semester, we're doing it virtually, so that's really fun. <laughs> Um, how do you do that? I don't know. We had to figure this out. Um, but students who are taking certain courses can actually use the materials in the Family Literacy Center. And then this room is usually two rooms. There's actually a divider, which is a big whiteboard, so that's kind of fun. Um, but right now, we it is actually physically spaced for a larger class. And we have other classrooms down here. So they all have multiple, usually multiple whiteboards, multiple smart boards, all sorts of things like that. We actually share the building with the College of Business, which is interesting and it's led to some interactions and more conversations. So that's the old part of the building and this is the new part of the building. Hey, thanks, Dr. Bardsley. Um, we, when you were, uh, when you came in in the atrium, that's kind of the connection between the College of Business and the College of Education. And you might have noticed there's a beautiful room with glass windows that is actually a smart board lab. So our students have the opportunity to practice some of the latest technology that teachers are using in the classrooms. Um, so this building is a huge benefit if you choose to come to Niagara. Um, now I wanted to talk to Mrs. McKissick a little bit about whether or not she likes to have students come into her office and ask her questions about their field placement. <laughs> What do you do if someone comes in there? You tell them to get out or do you help them? <laughs> <laughs> we can ask you that. Um, <laughs> no, uh, uh, we never tell anybody to go away. We tell everyone, absolutely, come on in, ask questions. In fact, uh, Ms. Bruno can attest to this. I mostly only yell at other adults around the College of Ed who try to answer field experience questions for us. Um, because we want students to come directly to us so that they can get the most you know, appropriate answers. Because in our office, that's what we do. We are all about field experiences. I'm always talking to the different school partners that we have. So I know exactly what the answers are for whatever questions you have with regard to field experiences. And if I have to ask, I mean, if, if, I, if I don't know the answer, I know who to go to out in the field to get those answers. So ideally, yes, I want to hear from uh, our students about whatever concerns or questions they have. And I'm sure these two young, lovely young ladies over here who are seniors who've gotten uh, emails from me lately can attest to the fact that I kind of go overboard in giving <laughs> information. I write really long emails because I want to include all the information I possibly can to make sure that I've addressed every and any concern you might have because at the end of the day, we, we know that this is important to you and the field experiences matter. And I want you to have the information as timely as I possibly can get it to you. And if you have any questions or concerns, yeah, our office is generally the place to go with anything related to field experience. Thank you. So Dr. Michelle Simonelli is the chair of uh, one of our major departments in the College of Education. So I think she is in a perfect position to tell us what she thinks is the one thing that makes Niagara the best choice for you. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna turn the tables and I'm gonna I'll give you all a quiz real quick. So the students in the room, the ones who would actually be students here at Niagara, raise your hand. And this is a compliment to the parents because sometimes it's hard to tell, especially with masks on. Nice and high, <laughs> nice and high. If you are a potential student here for Niagara, nice and high. Okay, now the quiz is, Dr. Foote told you the different majors. You probably in your mind are thinking, of where you maybe see yourself. And so I'm gonna break it up into three big chunks. So, and I'm gonna ask you which one you think you fit into. One would be the elementary group, which is the birth through grade six. The other would be a secondary group, which is a grades five through 12. And then the other would be TESOL, which is teaching English to the second language. So those are like really broad and we would specialize you even more than that. But how many of you would say you would be interested in elementary? Okay, look around, see who else is here that is also interested. How about secondary? And then how about TESOL? Awesome, awesome. Okay, so that wasn't my question though. You asked me something else. <laughs> <laughs> so we give you quizzes here, but really we, we like to talk more than, talk with you more than just give you a quiz. And we set you up for success with that. So um, what makes us different at Niagara? Um, one of the things I think is that you will find your education courses here very interactive. 
Uh, we work really hard to model the practices that we expect you to be teaching out in the classroom. So it is very unusual that you would sit in the class as you're doing right now and just sit and listen. We would be asking you questions. We would have you turn to your neighbors and talk to each other. Um, we expect that you will get to know each other in the classroom, and we also want to get to know you. Um, I'm teaching a freshman course this semester, and my students tell me that other than the courses they might be taking with Mrs. Bruno and Mrs. McKissick and our other education professors, they say that those are the only courses that they actually know their other students in. And so I, I know our, our class sizes are small across the campus. What makes us different in the College of Education is we want to get to know you. We want to get you to know each other. Um, and we're really committed to helping develop the next generation of effective teachers. So we love what we do. We are hoping that in four years time, five years time, if you start next fall, you're gonna be out there and you're gonna be effective teachers and we're gonna be so proud of you. Um, when you go out into the field and you say you're from Niagara University, schools will welcome you. They'll be super excited to hear that you're from Niagara. We have a great reputation um, and we're really proud of that. And we work hard to, to maintain that. So glad you're here today. Great. So you're going to make friends, you're going to get to know each other, <laughs> but you're also going to get to know our professors. Dr. Bardsley, can you tell us about some opportunities that students have to work with uh, faculty? Sure. Uh, so there's all different kinds. And uh, so one would be if, if you're in the honors program, you create an honors thesis. And you're all probably thinking, oh, that's just a big long paper. Who wants to do that? Well, in the College of Ed, we typically encourage our students who are doing the honors thesis to think beyond just writing a big research report. Um, last year, one of my honors thesis students um, wrote a children's book where most of her research went into the children's book as opposed to writing a big long paper. Um, Dr. Simonelli has done a lot of honors thesis, so that's one opportunity. Many of our professors try to encourage you to get involved in your field. Um, Dr. Foote mentioned the social studies conference. There's a state conference on almost any content area. There's a math one, there's an early childhood one, there's a special ed. And I know professors have invited undergrads and grads to come along. Um, I've had a couple of undergrads present posters um, about something they've done in class at conferences. There's also opportunities to do some research, maybe as you get a little further along, depending on the professor and your interest. Um, and we've had students do some work that's ended up getting published or being research at, for conferences. Great. So there are a lot of academic opportunities for you on campus. And you've heard our faculty and Dr. Foote talk a lot about that. But something that's really important in any school that you're considering attending is what is the campus going to be like? What opportunities are you going to have to get involved on campus? So we have a few girls here who are really involved on campus. Uh, Kelsey is a CA. She's going to tell you what a CA is and why that was a good fit for her. Um, so a CA on our campus is a community advisor. You probably hear us referred to as RAs at other schools. Um, essentially, we're that first line um, for students to promote health and wellness. So that's all across the board. That's academics, that's mental health, that's spiritual health, that's physical health, especially right now during COVID. Um, and I think of us as triage nurses. So whatever problem or situation you might be going to, your CA is a great first stop because we can send you out to whoever might help you best, whether that's Tammy in our office or this office, I guess, um, the Academic Success Center, if that's health services, if that's counseling services, student affairs, the dean of students, is it a problem with your roommate? Do you just not know where your class is for the first day? Um, how to work your email? Um, we do all of those type of things, but then we also do the fun programming. So um, next Monday, I have a coloring de-stress event for midterms. We're giving away donuts and cider from a local donut shop. Um, we do pizza parties. We take trips sometimes. Anything um, that you think of that's fun, we probably are already doing it. Good. Thanks, Kelsey. Now, Rebecca is very active on campus also. I don't know everything that she does. I do know that she's a, I know she's a tour guide, so I'm going to ask her to tell you a little bit about that and how she likes that and what else she does when she's hanging out on campus. So first on the tour guide front, um, so I basically welcome students to campus. I give tours around uh, talk to people about the different buildings on campus and things that you can do. I know some of you got to go on a tour with Grace earlier, but both Kelsey and I are tour guides. So if you have any questions about anything else on campus other than just this academic building, like feel free to ask us. 
Um, everything else I'm involved in, like I've tried almost everything on campus from Greek life to sports to academic clubs to social clubs, literally any single club I've tried. Um, so I tried club soccer. Not everything has worked out, unfortunately. <laughs> so like, like I said, I had my foot in everything. But so I know a lot about different things. So uh, I tried out for club soccer last year. That didn't work. I rushed one of the sororities on campus. That didn't work out. I tried again this year. Didn't work out again. Um, so currently, uh, or and then last year, uh, I also got involved in only one club last year. That was also my downfall because I'm super social, as you can tell. Um, I joined one club, made like five new friends, and I am not, unfortunately not doing that club again, but it was about like campus programming board, which plans all of the different events on campus. I enjoyed it a little bit, but it wasn't a club I wanted to be part of. So then currently I'm a tour guide on campus. I'm involved in NewsGo, which is our student government. I am my class secretary. So we do a lot of like legislative things on campus while also host events. So like next week, my sophomore class is doing an event and we're bringing a food truck here to campus that's available to all students actually, but sophomores can get like a discount on their food. Um, I'm also involved in fantasy sports clubs, which does a lot with different sports on campus. They hosted a Super Bowl party last year. I am also the treasurer of NUFTA, which is the NU Future Teachers Association. And I am also part of Club, Club Rugby, which I joined this year. So I really do have a foot in every department on campus. And if I haven't tried it, I'll try it next year. Who knows? <laughs> well, great. Susel, I hope you are listening and taking notes <laughs> because as a freshman, you can learn a lot from Rebecca to get involved. I know one thing that you're involved in is working on campus, which is a great opportunity for some of our students. As I said earlier, Susel actually works in the Dean's office. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how that has been? <laughs> 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 it's great. It's great. <laughs> No, the office is very welcoming and warming. Everybody's so kind. And you have donuts, right? Yeah, they have donuts, they have coffee. Brownies, I saw brownies the other day. Mm -hmm. And it's really easy. Like, since I'm new at it, I really need a lot of, like, instruction. And everybody's so polite and easy to work with. And one thing that I did realize in the College of Education is, like, every student really does matter. Because sometimes I can't find a file or something, and I ask um, one of the faculty for their names, and they're like, oh, this student in this major goes here. So like, it's not like um, your file is going to be one file in a melting pot of files. You're going to be a unique file, and they're going to know your name, and they're going to know your major, and... Yeah, so it's very nice working in the College of Education. Good. Well, I'm interested to see what you'll try out next year after meeting Rebecca tonight. So, um, I tried it all. Another, another thing that I'm sure you're wondering about is um, what happens when I'm out student teaching? You know, you've heard that we get your placement for you, we prepare you for student teaching, but how do we actually support students while they're out student teaching? Mrs. McKissick? We, we we don't. <laughs> no, don't like that answer. Okay. So what we do is every student has a field supervisor uh, from the very beginning of your placement to the very end of your placement. One placement or two placements for student teaching. You have a field supervisor who is someone who works for the university, who is your mentor and your support system and acts as a liaison between the university and the school you're going to be student teaching in. You have any questions, you have any concerns, anything's going on, you just wanna you know, bounce a lesson plan off of them. That person is there fully supporting you the entire way. That person makes themselves available to your cooperating teacher also to check in on you, see how you're doing. That person observes you. Uh, two seven week field, uh, student teaching placements, they're gonna observe you twice in each placement. So they're going to support you and watch how you're developing throughout the entirety of the semester. And they are there with you again from the beginning to the end. Great, thank you. Um, so I don't know how much time we have left, probably not a lot, but one thing I wanna make sure you hear about, Dr. Simonelli, in addition to all the other things that she does in the college, being one of our favorite professors, counseling students, she helps us with uh, bring our transfer students in, but she also leads a study abroad trip. 
So I was hoping maybe she could just give you a firsthand view of some of our uh, study abroad experiences. So Dr. Foote and Dr. Bardsley and myself have each led a study abroad to Italy. Uh, some of us have gone several times. And uh, so all of you that raised your question, your hands to the first test that we had with saying that you were early childhood, um, the study abroad to Italy is really designated towards early childhood majors. Um, as Dr. Foote mentioned, we go to Rome, Florence, and Venice, and we actually work in preschools in Italy, and it's just such a great opportunity. And so what that provides us uh, the chance to do is to put into practice some of the things you're, work you're learning in your classroom. And so you're doing that in your field experiences here, but we're just doing it in a completely different setting. We do a lot of touring and, and fun eating of gelato and things like that too, Pasta. and pastas. And um, so that's one really great opportunity. Um, another opportunity across the campus, but specific to the College of Education is we've done an internship in the summer in Haiti. And so I've taken a group um, for four summers in a row. We've gone to Haiti and we worked in a summer camp in Haiti for seven weeks. Excellent opportunity for any education majors um, regardless of elementary or secondary. And um, I go with the students, we get acclimated to the area and do a lot of uh, prep for that. It's a completely different experience. So we have that, that opportunity as well in the College of Education. Um, across the campus, there are a lot of other study abroad opportunities. A lot of our students will do a study abroad in Europe for a semester. You work very closely with your advisor to make sure you can stay on track for your four-year plan. And that just gives you another opportunity to experience many different things that you wouldn't otherwise. Great, thanks. I want you to all remember that when you leave here today, you can fit a study abroad trip into your curriculum. A lot of schools, you know, if you're an education major, they kind of take that out of the mix. It's not an option for you, but you can do that as an education student at Niagara University. I'm gonna put Dr. Foote on the spot here, and I'm gonna ask her to run up here really quickly, Dr. Foote. Uh, because there's one thing she didn't. Trip. <laughs> there's one thing she didn't mention that I want her to talk about really quickly. Is we offer a variety of four plus one and four plus two <laughs> programs at Niagara. So could you just really quickly tell students why that might be a good idea for them? Yes. Oh, sure. Um, and many of you may not understand this or realize it yet, but part of uh, professional certification for teachers requires that you get a master's degree. Uh, so uh, you can get initial certification in the state of New York with a four-year undergraduate degree, um, but then you have a short window of time to get your master's degree and three years of uh, teaching experience in. And uh, so uh, if you uh, opt to do one of these four plus one or four plus two programs, what we end up doing is looking at what, uh, what master's degree you might be interested in and how we can count some of those graduate courses simultaneously concurrently with your undergraduate um, program. So you're getting that in under the tuition from your undergraduate degree. So you can complete things, um, you can complete the entire master's degree process much more quickly. The other thing that you should think about with a master's degree is um, it should lead to additional certification. So uh, sometimes our freshmen come in and they want to get six certifications. I would like to do birth to six with the special ed and the TSOL, and I also want to be a high school social studies teacher. Um, I fully understand why at 17 or 18 years of age, you don't want to close any doors or any avenues. And uh, that's why it's nice is that you're going to be able to uh, pare that down a little bit going forward and saying, what do I really want to do? If I could only do one of these, what could I do? But you can also think about getting additional certifications as part of your graduate degree. So we have we offer um, master's degrees in special education. So if you're doing birth to six and you didn't necessarily know whether you should do special ed, you can get your master's in special ed, or you can get your master's in special ed seven twelve. We also have TSOL as a master's degree. We have literacy, um, so you can become a reading specialist or literacy specialist as part of the master's. School counseling, school psychology. Um, after that, you can go into educational leadership. Uh, some of our programs are online and some of our programs are face-to-face -face, and some of our programs are half and half. Uh, so you could start in the special education online program while you're still here living on campus and then take a job in Texas or Thailand 
and still keep working on your master's degree after you left us. Did I answer the question? You did a great job. She didn't give me a question. She's a very good student. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I think we are actually going to have Dr. Foote stay right there and maybe open it up to questions now. Emily, do we have any questions online? So I had a few. Um, one I had was, this is for Mrs. McKissick, if students have placements, could um, if they had like somebody at home at their home school district, and they go back home and do it if they're from Rochester or something like that. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You can student teach where you're from, absolutely. Yeah, um, and we actually sometimes encourage that. Depend, you know, students are going along the way. Um, that student teaching semester may be exhausting for you. And while some of your other friends are seniors living in one of the residence halls, staying up till four in the morning, but you are a student teaching and you need to get up at four in the morning uh, to get to your school and do things like that. It actually might be better to do um, student teaching from home uh, where mom might do your laundry and make dinner. <laughs> and <laughs> you didn't want that for the, for the rest of the time, but you, you'll want that then. So that's, and, and Rochester is a prime example of where we have had a lot of students go and get placed. Uh, another one was, what if a student um, started off in a different major, is it hard to switch into education? Like if you start off as a biology major or a history major? No, that quite often that happens. Um, and within the first year, students are looking at that. We have an outstanding academic exploration program here on campus. That's for students who aren't leaning toward teaching. They have no idea what they want to do. Um, and quite often, those students will take a couple courses with us just to try things out. Um, but if you were a bio major and you could still take an elective in education early on and put one foot over here and see if that it might be something that you like. But we've had students transfer in from all areas. Again, you are not expected to know what you want to do for the rest of your life right now. Um, in fact, these next four years are for trying those things out. And so try everything and see what you want to do. Absolutely. And that happens to be my specialty. She's, yeah, I was say, she should answer that question because she, she's the person who can still figure out how they get finished in four. Yes, I have had juniors switch into education only a yeah. couple times, but she's um, a miracle worker. There's a, there's a lot of flexibility. And this is something else I'd like to mention quickly. If you're if you come here and you're like, I love kindergarten, I only want to teach kindergarten, that's all I've ever wanted to do. And like Dr. Foote said earlier, you get out in that kindergarten classroom in your sophomore year and say, wow, you know, I've done three or four placements in kindergarten or elementary school level classrooms. And it's, it's actually not for me, but you feel stuck. Like I can't transfer now. I've been doing this for two years. Actually, for the first two years of our programs, you take classes in common with the other education majors. So it's very easy for you to move throughout those different programs. So you won't be kind of railroaded into choosing one program at 18 years old and sticking with that for four years. We can move things around. We can move your concentrations around. Uh, we spend lots of time doing that. I think that's right. Yeah, that. sometimes you'll get a placement that maybe wasn't your first choice, like uh, a certain grade level or type of school, and you're thinking you're gonna hate it. And it turns out actually that's where you belong and you end up switching. Um, that doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen fairly mm -hmm. regularly. And that's why we encourage students to try all the different levels because you may have something, a whole plan that you um, gets, gets thrown out because of something that makes you even more happy. I thought that I wanted to be a kindergarten teacher one day. That's <laughs> impossible. I know. <laughs> First kid wiped his nose on my shirt. It was a wrap. I said, okay, so this is not my life. And I said, that's my other one. My, the middle school is the same. But like, we want you to, like you have this passion in the way that you fit and those kids just make you smile. Um, my husband is a middle school teacher and he has a middle school sense of humor. Um, he loves it and they love that him, but um, that would not be where I would be. Those kids are weird. <laughs> Believe me, I've raised two of them and had to go in the other room and pull my hair out. <laughs> Uh, but if that's where you belong, oh, it's like fun every single day. It's just, you know, you, the silly jokes that you make, they laugh at and you're happy. So exactly. Great. I think we're reaching, uh, we're reaching our time limit. Do we have any questions in the room? Any questions? We talk a lot. So we usually, you know, answer questions before you ask them. Uh, one thing I want to mention, if you do come up with any questions in your backpack, there's a white folder. 
If you open it up, you'll see my card stapled on the inside, Tammy Bruno. I am, you know, I, I almost sleep with my computer. So um, I'm available all the time. My job is to answer your questions, help you figure out where you wanna go and then make your transition into Niagara really, really smooth. So please don't hesitate to contact me and I can certainly hook you up with any of our students or any of our faculty and staff if you have questions for them too. So- And I uh, put Tammy Bruno's email address in there. She, uh, you, this is not your only chance to uh, decide what you want about Niagara. There are many opportunities to come back. If you would like to come back and shadow a student to uh, follow them around, see what a day in the life is like. You have to shadow from six feet apart, but they can be very <laughs> friendly. Um, we would love you, you know, to be able to see yourself uh, in those classes, see how it feels. And uh, we spent a lot of time talking about the distinguishing features and the great facts and things like that. But this decision is really a decision of the heart. I looked at different places, some places I went and I had hives. Not, not that they weren't the best places in the world, but I just had hives and it didn't fit. Um, we want you to find your fit. And if it's not with us, we will forgive you, that's okay. Um, but we want you to actually try these things out and, and figure out what the best thing is for you. And uh, from a, I'm an educational psychologist from my perspective. If you find out what makes you happy for the rest of your life, then I'm happy. Um, and uh, so we will help with all of that. And Tammy's the person to contact um, if you wanna do that, or you can contact the admissions office. Uh, Emily's just put some uh, contact information there. We speak very closely with one another. If there's something they don't know or something we don't know, we will reach out to the places that do that. That's the Niagara way. 